Assalamu alaikum. My name is Faiza Kodiari. I am 12 years old. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Um, in Canada, I'm in grade 8. I'm in elementary school. I'm not studying anything particular, just normal school. I'm not sure where I want to be in the next five years, but um, throughout all my years, I hope to be successful and near Ahlul Bayt through all my times. Um, when I heard stories about Karbala, uh, it was one of those places where you can't really tell a story. You have to go visit it to experience the full, full image, to experience being closer to the Imam, being closer to Hazrat Abu al-Fazl al-Abbas alayhi salam. Um, my friends told me stories about how they enjoyed the experience, how they wished to go lots more, how they enjoyed and how people were nice there. But they also told about the security and how it was tight. But everything was amazing is what they said. But still it didn't clarify for me enough how it was. It didn't clear the image in my brain. Um, when I went, it was one of those places where you had to go to experience the full thing. So my first impression of Karbala was when I first came, I was very happy. It was my first time coming here. Uh, I felt a sudden connection when I went to Ziyarat. I had the sudden connection of going to the haram of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Hazrat Abu al-Fazl al-Abbas alayhi salam. There was a connection and I felt a bit worried when going in. I, had no, I didn't know what to ask, didn't know what to say didn't know how to say salam to him properly. But when I went, everything went smoothly. I was relieved and hopeful. I feel as if my faith in Islam has gotten a bit more. I feel that before in Canada, I couldn't experience the same things I experienced here in Karbala. That was my initial aim of coming to Karbala was to pray, to be successful, to ask Ahlul Bayt and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam to help me be closer to Allah, to help me be a better person in general, to help me be successful in life, make sure I don't stray off the path of Islam, make sure I stay and be a good person in general. That was my aim. Yes. Um, yes, many of my friends went. They would always come back with wonderful stories. And I would always feel left behind. Didn't know what to say to them. It's like, oh yeah, I've been there too, but I haven't. And after going, I could finally go and tell my friends of all the wonderful experiences I had in Karbala. Yes, that was, I think. Um, one thing for the day of Ashura, uh, I would tell them that the Imam Hussein was the unity, was the one person that brought us all together was the one thing that brought people from all over the world together to this one place to ziyarat to do to, to pray for him to cry for him to read dua to do salat this is one of the stories i will tell them hopefully they will come again and will not let go of that tradition as coming here to the haram of imam hussein alayhi salam has a lot of sawab and will make you a better person in general yeah. The culture of my father and the culture here, plus the culture of Toronto, is not very different, but the culture of Toronto and Afghanistan, is the population is very small. Not very small, but small enough that it's not like Karbala. Karbala has people all over the world coming, no matter, no matter who you are, no matter what nationality, no matter what race you are. People all over the world come, whereas maybe in Toronto, maybe only a few races come. In Afghanistan, it's only Af Afghans. That's one of the main comparisons I see. Um, also, people don't discriminate. Even though we all talk different languages here in Karbala, we somehow have a way of connecting with each other, and that way is our Imam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Um, in Toronto, they don't emphasize that enough. But in Karbala, since the Haram is here, I feel that is a big influence on what we see in our communities every single day. Um, Ziyarat in general is um, someplace, a thing, you, a, an action you can do a dua, a salah, but that's the general idea of ziyarat. But when I sell it to my friends back home, they'll ask me, how did you feel? To, in these nights especially, ziyarat is, has the most sawab, and on these nights it's the most crowded, most difficult to get to the haram of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, most difficult to get to the haram of Abu al-Fazl al-Abbas alayhi salam. And s telling them would be like, <clears throat> how like uh, 
be like, it was very difficult, but it was a joyful and hopeful experience. My faith got restored. My, the pillar of my Islam that I was trying to build, the land has gotten bigger. I would try to tell them like, I feel more confident about who I am. I don't try to hide that I'm wearing a hijab. This is the path that I'm following and I'm proud of it. Ziyarat sort of makes that experience more brighter and a hopeful experience for me. People ask me a lot of questions that don't relate to what I'm doing. They think that under this, I have no hair, but they don't realize when I tell them the history, like when I tell them the history of concealing beauty and like, and telling them they don't believe me. Some non-Muslims, they're like, you just don't have hair. Um, but some of them are very supportive of me. Some of them support me throughout my daily life. And I'm very happy that in Canada, Nobody stops you from doing anything. Wearing the hijab is one of the pride accomplishments I have in my life. I'm wearing it proud and wearing it proudful is just one of the accomplishments that has been really great in Canada. Um, so my parents convinced me to watch Shabake Imam Hussain, alayhi salam TV. And the English program always tells you, come to Ziyarat, do this, come to Karbala, this is your one chance. The haram has a lot of sawab. Being influenced by that, my parents and I, both, all of us wanted to go to Ziyarat. Uh, but we heard stories that made us have our, have our doubts. Stories about how security was really tight. We had um, a little brother and we didn't think he could handle the trip. Since we are in Canada and this is Iraq, it's a two day like, trip. And we didn't know if we could handle it. But Shabak Imam Hussain alayhi salam TV always convinced us. They were always like, the sawab here, you won't get a chance like this ever again. What if you regret this after? And we didn't want to regret it in the hereafter. So we decided to do this trip once, get our wajib over with. But then after we came here, we realized that this was actually worth it. And we would love to come here more than once, maybe, I don't know, every, every year. It, it was a wonderful trip. I feel like instead of going to another place for my vacation in summer, I should just come to Karbala or maybe even during the time like Muharram, which is the time where Karbala is really crowded, I would like to come here. It's one of those places where that I would give up my other vacations just to come here. Uh, Shabak Kemal Hussein has really influenced me a lot. Yeah. Um, since my, some of my um, friends know what the ziyarat I'm doing is, it won't be too hard. But some of them that are, really don't know, they're really into the Western culture. Uh, I would explain it to them. It's a time of my, as a time of mourning, just like just as if you would mourn for Jesus Christ at the time when he got uh, crucified. I I mourn for my Imam Imam Hussein alayhi salam when he got martyred on the day of Ashura, the tenth of Muharram. And they would ask me what the tenth of Muharram is, what happened, who was the victim, and why were they the victim? Um, to one of my friends, I actually explained. I said that without our Imam Imam Hussein alayhi salam, we would never have Islam. I would never be here. I would be. I. I would not be wearing this hijab right now. I would not be, I would not have like a certain religion to follow. I would just be there. But with my Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he came and protected our religion and protected our nation in general. And she questions me, she questions me later, who decided to martyr your Imam if he was so great and he was so powerful? Um, I told her, uh, Yazid. She's like, who's Yazid? Um, she's, I'm like, she was an evil person at the time, since it's hard to explain the full history. But um, he hated Ahlul Bayt, which leads to more questions. Who's Ahlul Bayt? Well, that's his family, the Prophet Muhammad. And since Prophet Muhammad has now a name, he has a name in around Canada. It's, you can't ask one person without them knowing. Uh, so Prophet Muhammad and his progeny, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, um, I would tell her that he is his grandson and she would understand from there then and she wouldn't ask me more questions and, and pester me about why are you wearing black why are you sorrowful are you are you is did someone from your family die it's like no nobody from my family died but someone very important 
to me died a hundred years, even thousands of years ago on this day. Yeah. Excellent. So that's the importance. Um, well, I've never really tried to convince my friends, but if I had to convince, I would tell them if you're ever feeling uh, depressed, maybe anxious about something, maybe nervous, read a little surah. I tell them a little surah, like, um, and then I would tell them, do you have any worries? Do you have problems that you're experiencing right now? Maybe you should go and do this. Maybe you should go visit the ziyarat. Maybe you should read a little dua to help you feel a little bit less anxious. Um, most of my friends, they kind of trust what I say and they would do what I say, but some of them are a little bit more on the edge, not really sure what to do. Should they follow what I say or should they just keep on being depressed? Um, so to convince them more, it's like if, if she, because some of them, they stress eat. I don't know, like if they have stress, they start eating instead of doing that because I'll tell them instead of like gaining weight or being more anxious, you should just be a, more calm and serene and think about the things that I told you and think about it. Most of them would probably do what I say. I don't really know. Something that I'll never forget is the unity that Imam Hussain salam has created. Um, I can see people crying every single day, on the every single time on this day of Ashura, and when they cry, one person cries, another person cries, another person cries. They all start crying together. They all read salat together. They all read dua together. That's one thing that Imam Hussain salam has did that has really caught my eye, that has stayed in this generation in the year 2017 to the people all around the world. And people all around the world, because of the internet, because of TV, can see how people mourn for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. They can see that they're being united and we're not seen as people who just cry. We, we have a reason behind crying. It's not only for Imam Hussein alayhi salam's hardships, but for our ignorance at the time before. And our, when we're asking for forgiveness, we're asking him to help us go to paradise in the hereafter. Um, I didn't really, f there is no feel closest to, when coming to Karbala, you kind of feel close to everybody. But especially the haram of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Hazrat Abu al-Fazl al-Abbas alayhi salam. Those were where I really clicked. I really knew what was happening, what was going on. I didn't have to worry about, am I saying this right? Am I doing this right? Am I asking for the right things? Am I being selfish? Am I mm, asking for forgiveness for my sins in the past? Coming to Imam Hussein, it's like he's alive. He, it's not like he was martyred on that on the day of Ashura. It's like he's still alive, talking, breathing, with us right now. When he, when we're crying on his haram, sometimes I feel as if I feel his presence around me. It's same with Hazrat Abu Fazl Abbas. When people cry and throw pieces of fabric on top of his holy shrine, they, they understand. I feel some of them feel the presence like I do. Some of them cry, some of them stay silent with tears in their eyes. Some of them yell and ask for forgiveness, ask for help, ask for success in life. Since, yes, I feel as if those two harams were one of the most significant places where I felt really close in. The message that I would like to give out to the people, to the youth of this generation especially, is that don't miss out on the chance to come to Karbala. Those stories about security being tight is true, and but the war zones and you not feeling safe, I don't feel as if that's true. Karbala is one of the most place, one of those places where I feel safest in. True, it's a war zone outside of Karbala, but inside Karbala, you feel safe, you feel protected, you feel as if Imam Hussein alayhi salam is protecting you with his Ahlul Bayt. I would tell people all around the world to give up their other vacations just for one year to come to Karbala and to experience this one thing that's going to happen here since a one-time chance only. Um, going to the Haram has more sawab than going to Hajj, going, and especially more sawab than going to those other vacations that have no meaning. Coming here especially, I'm telling to the youth now, convince your parents, especially if they're uncertain, um, telling you, oh no, there's war zone. Oh no, you're not gonna feel safe. Stop them from their worries. 
because the youths of this generation are going to be the people of tomorrow. And that's the one thing we need to fix. Because if the people don't know Imam Hussein properly, Imam Hussein alayhi salam properly, then how are we going to build the path for Islam? How are we going to meet the Imam of our time in the future? We need to go to the Haram and experience everything so we know what's going on. That's the message I'd like to give.